everyone, my name is Minty. Joining me today, I've got Teddy Covers at Teddy underscore Covers on Twitter and Drew Martin Betts, or, oh, that's his Twitter name, at Drew Martin Betts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this Sunday, I'm sorry, this Saturday, we've got USC at Notre Dame. USC has lost two of their last three games. They were on the road. They've got a couple injuries. They've got a, they had a bye week to kind of rest up a little. Do, how do we think they're going to perform against Notre Dame? Do you think? USC is going to upset them, or Notre Dame's going to, this is a no-brainer, they're going to win? What do you think, Teddy? Ah, good, okay. Yes, you first. <laughs> we found out. <laughs> so, in general, I don't, I, and I shouldn't say I don't like, I hate the concept of laying double digits with the team off a blowout win, again, and then before that, they had a big win over Virginia TV. Everyone paid attention. Then a big loss against Georgia. Back-to-back -back huge games, blowout win. To me, that is not an optimal spot to lay double digits here. When you put those three games together, in, does that make sense in tandem like that? You know, no, not really. So let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, because it, it, you're, you're laying a price for the win last week, mm -hmm. okay, because they look so good. Before that, it was – Two marquee point spread covers. The key is that they covered, okay? Mm -hmm. It's three in a row for Notre Dame. Now There's a betting bandwagon with okay. the Fighting Irish, and they're coming off the blowout win. So that's, the, you know, it's not so much the opponents the previous two weeks. It's the fact that, hey, you bet them the one week, they can't, you know, the next, and the next. And that's how a betting bandwagon gr grows. And when you, they're coming off, the, in particular, the blowout win last week, now here's the price, you know, and that's why the opener was as high as it was. We've already seen sharp money come in on USC, and you can understand it. When you grade out the size and the speed and the talent, you know, what's there? You know, le less than a touchdown difference between these two teams, maybe less than a field goal. Uh, USC has options at the quarterback position this week. There's talk that Slovis is going to be back, and it was a misleading loss against Washington. I know they lost. I know they failed to cover the spread. They were in that game. You know, they had turnovers at the wrong times, which they may do here. But I can understand why the sharp money is on USC. That's the only way I would bet this. Okay. Today, I get your concept. I didn't know where you were going with that because it was almost like, uh, you know, good teams winning and then, you know, not wanting to bet on them. But I get it in terms of getting the bandwagon behind it. Mm -hmm. I, I would go with this from a little bit different angle. And it's, it's not one of, you know, you know, the plays that I'm going to be going really big on, Minty. But I will say this, you know, USC is 0-2 on the road year to date. Uh, third string quarterback, second string might be back. Uh, who knows? But um, Notre Dame off of the I, I would give another quasi bye week here. 52 to nothing over Bowling Green. Time somewhat time to prepare for USC at home. Double digit favorite, yes. But Ian Book, Brian Kelly, that combination of head coach, uh, offensive, uh, you, you know, really, he knows what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. Ian Book, in my opinion, is very underrated, a dual threat guy. I still don't think he's getting the respect in one of the better quarterbacks in the country. Plus the fact Notre Dame's defensive line is going to get after who's ever playing quarterback for the USC Trojans. I think they're going to have trouble on the offensive side of the ball. If you made me bet it, I would lay it here with Notre Dame. Um, I know that they have covered in a bunch of games in a row and getting that bandwagon, but uh, maybe wait until a little bit before kickoff because it does look like USC money's coming in. But uh, I think Notre Dame, you know, has been a money train of late and I would continue to ride it. Anything else, Teddy? I mean, it was 49-14 last time here. You know, I mean, the Irish absolutely annihilated that team. It wasn't even as close as the final score, um, literally. But that was a game in which USC, I believe, was missing four starting offensive linemen that all got hurt either that, or the, that week or the week before. It was a disaster for them. And then last year, competitive game, 24-17. You know, there's not that much difference between these two teams, and USC is a pretty good team to be catching this many points. points. So, uh, looks like me and you are on opposite sides of this one, Drew. Looks like it, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for your insight, gentlemen. Special offer available only at sportsmemo.com. Get three days all access to your favorite handicapper for just $39. This would include all 5% plays, which by themselves sell for $40.